Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Garage Talk with Doug. Today we are doing a brake inspection. And uh, the vehicle we're working on once again is the 2003 Mercury Grand Marquis. Uh, as you can see, I have the uh, front brake, left front brake exposed right now. Uh, I have the tire off. All right, we've got the car jacked up in the air and we've got jack stands under the car supporting it. Uh, we always want to think safety. Patreon Pilot, how are you today? Wakisha, I'm sorry, Patreon Pirate, Wakisha Pilot, hello guys, good to see you. Uh, we're going to get right into this, okay? So uh, let me start by taking our caliper off so we can get a good look at the brake pads on this. Now I've already looked at these brakes, but uh, I wanted to take you guys through it so you can see what exactly is going on here. So we're going to start by removing the caliper. There are two 14 millimeter head bolts here. That I'm going to loosen up and unscrew and once I get those unscrewed I'll be able to remove the caliper there's one of them out now listen they're not normally this loose guys I've already prepped this and loosened these bolts up I hope you can see what I'm doing here John Williams how you doing all right here we go we've got those two bolts out with those two bolts out, I'll be able to remove the caliper. So I'm going to try and do that now. All right, it's going to stick a little bit. So I'm going to take a screwdriver here, and I'm going to pry my caliper a little bit just to create a little room here so that I can get the uh, caliper off. Okay, this is the brake, front brake caliper. Whoops. Okay, let's see who else came on here. Let me just back up in the chat. Donald Layton, how are you? Patreon Pirate, Wakisha, I think I've said hello to you. <laughs> John Williams, how are you? Akula, how are you? Fear the Wandering Droll, it's good to see you guys. Uh, okay, we're about ready to remove this caliper. I've uh, pried it with the screwdriver a little bit. And uh, my next step here is going to be to remove it so that we can take a look at the brake pads. Okay, here goes nothing. Bear with me, folks. All right, we got to pry a little bit more here. And I'm going to insert my screwdriver again. And I'm going to pry a little bit more on it. And we're going to coax it along here a little bit. All righty, it's coming. You know, the key with this stuff is patience, folks. Patience goes a long way. And it's coming. All right. It's been a little stubborn. But she's slowly but surely coming off. i got to pry a little bit more here, folks. So just bear with me again. Okay, this should come off now. There we go, it's coming. And we're going to set that caliper on top of things here because we have this rubber hose and we don't want to put any kinks in this rubber hose here. What I'm looking at when I'm checking the brakes is I'm checking this hose. I want to make sure there's no cracks, that the hose is in good condition. And I think you can see that it is. All right, so we don't have any problems there. That's what moves the brake fluid from the master cylinder or I should say the brake fluid moves through that hose from the master cylinder, through the brake lines, through the hose, and to the caliper. All right, we're taking a look at our pads here, and uh, I notice a little uh, odd wear here, in that uh, my outboard pad, which is this pad here, all right, let me pry that away a little bit so you can see it better. All right, my outboard pad, as you can see, is wearing a bit more wearing a bit more than my inboard pad it's wearing a little faster which is not unusual but it could indicate a problem that I have my brakes hanging up here a little bit okay what I'm looking at here guys and I, let me get this down in here where you can see 
All right, what I'm looking at here, this is my metal backing plate here on the brake pad, okay? Can you see that? That's my metal backing plate. What I'm looking at here is this material right here. That's my lining material. And the lining material on this is pretty well worn out. I knew it would be because, as I said, I've inspected these brakes once before. And, uh, you know, I knew that I was going to need brakes. All right, I'm just chipping off some of this rust scale here. And we want to get some of that out of the way. Okay, it's not uncommon to get some rust scale on the brake rotors. As you can see, I'm chipping it off with my screwdriver right now. And it's coming right off. All right. It's a common problem. In any case, folks, as you can see, these brakes are ready for replacement. I'm just going to pop these pads out for just a second here just to show you. All right. Just bear with me. Okay. Just bear with me here. All right. There's my outboard pad. And as you can see, I don't know, maybe you can see it or not. There's my friction material. That's the friction side of the brake pad. And you can see how thin the lining is there. So we knew that we were going to need to replace these. And I've already got brake pads ordered. They should be in here sometime this week. So next weekend, we're going to do a brake job. Today, we're just doing a brake inspection. All right. I also want to take a look at that inboard pad. Okay. This is the inboard pad here. And I'm going to pry that out. Just give me a minute here. And, whoops, there we go. All righty. And that is the inboard pad. And this is the shim that goes on the back of the inboard pad. All right, that I'm holding next to it there. Give me a second, folks, here. I'm going to set down the phone for just a second. As i got to put this shim back on. There we go. That's how the shim goes on, just like that. And we're going to put that pad back into place, okay? So what we want to do is we want to take this pad, and there is actually clips here that that fits into. Don't know whether you can see that or not, but I'm going to try and show it to you. That goes in there like that. Okay, just like that. And then this one is going to go in like this. And sometimes we need to tap it into place. This one is giving me a little bit of a trouble here. All right, we'll get it. We will get it. Rest assured. Whoops. Oh, it's being difficult. Okay. Okay, give me a second here, folks. I need both hands. I'm going to set you down for just a minute. Okay, we're going to set you down right there for a second while I get this back into place. Oh, it's being a pain, guys. It's not wanting to cooperate with me, but give me a minute here. Well, the mosquitoes are out in full force today. So, uh... All right, let me just back up here to the chat here a little bit. Akula, uh, let's see, Akula, what am I working on? I'm working on my 2003 Mercury Grand Marquis. All right, I'm working on my brakes because I know that they needed to be replaced. King of Chuck, how are you? Yeah, boats have brakes. They sure do. It's called an anchor. What year is your car, Doug? As I said before, it's a 2003. Yeah, hammer time. It sure is, Chuck. It's uh, time to break out the hammer, but since I don't have a hammer nearby, we're going to use the next best thing. Let me get 
this up in here first. There we go. Now let's try and get it in here. What is going on here? All right, let me tap this down. There we go. Now let's try this again. <laughs> oh, you are being a pain, a stubborn pain. There we go. Nope, almost. Let's try this one more time. There we go. Now we got it. All right, let me show you what that looks like now. All right, let me show you what this looks like. That's the pad back into place. All right, we're going to do the same thing for the outboard pad. We'll put that one back into place, just like so. And we're going to tap that into place, too. All right. There we go. Since we're not putting brakes on a car today, like I said, we're reassembling this right now. I just wanted to show you what to look for as a, in a brake inspection. What we would also do is we would look at our rotor. If there were any grooves in it or anything like that, we would want to machine that rotor. I will machine them when I do the brakes on this car, which is for next weekend. But uh, we want to measure the rotor. We want to check the thickness of it against minimum specifications as set by the manufacturer. We don't want to machine the rotor too thin. If we machine the rotor too thin, it causes the rotor to be prone to heat and warpage, which can cause brake pedal pulsation and actually a shake in the steering wheel. So it's very important to make sure that we, uh, when we service these rotors, that we don't cut them too thin. All right, there are specifications. We want to measure them, the rotor with a micrometer. We want to check for run out and stuff like that. All right, to reassemble these brakes, what I need to do is I need to put the caliper back over the brake pad. So again, let me see if I can do this. Let me try this. I don't know whether you can see that, folks. Hopefully you can. I'm going to try and set this caliper back into place. Now, these calipers are a little on the heavy side. All right. Nothing that can't be handled. Oh, let's make this easier. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to set the caliper up here. And using my very large channel pliers okay I want to push these caliper pistons in a little bit so let's open this up a little bit and let's grab our caliper piston alrighty let's grab our caliper piston like so and let's give a little squeeze here yeah let me go open it up one more notch there we go that should work Okay, there we go. That's better. And we're going to push that caliper piston in just a little bit. This is going to make it a little easier for the caliper to go back on, folks. I don't know whether you can see what I'm doing here, but I'll show you in just a second. I just need both hands right now for this. So, okay, my caliper piston's moved back in enough. All right, let me get the camera and show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, those are my caliper pistons here. I just pushed those back in, and that is going to make room for me to set this caliper back on its saddle so that I can bolt it back. I'm sorry, folks. We evidently buffered here. Uh, yes, the car should be on jack stands when working on it. I do have jack stands under this right now. Okay, and I also have my jack under the car. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten up these bolts. Let me just run these in finger tight first. Okay, there's one. Now we can go ahead and tighten that up. And we'll go down here to the bottom one. Again, run it in finger tight first. Okay. That's the bolt right there. I'm running it in finger tight. And now we can go ahead and put our wrench on it and finish tightening it up. Okay. And I want to make sure that these are good and snug. You know, we don't want our brake caliper coming loose, as that could create a really bad accident. So, let's tighten these up. Okay, that's good and tight. All right. 
So my brakes are back together again. We're going to leave them like this for now until I can get to it next week to replace those brake pads. I showed you how worn they are. All right. Yes, Waukesha jacks fail. That's why we use jack stands under here. I uh, once had that happen to me while I was underneath the car, and I pinned underneath it. Uh, and it was no fun, believe you me. It landed me in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, finger tight. You saw that band at Coachella last year? All right, guys, give me a minute here. I'm going to just wrap this up, and then we can go ahead and start answering some of your questions. All right, let me just flip the camera around here. And hey there, there I am, or there I is. Alrighty, good to see you all. Okay, so anyway, we got this pretty much wrapped up at this point. Alright, uh, you know, my next step would be to straighten out the wheel so I can put the tire back on. So let's do that next. Oh. Here I come again with the tire this time. And let me get that into position here. Okay. There we go. And let me get my tire back up on here. Okay, almost. More. We gotta come up some more with this puppy. And oh, there we go. All right. We got the tire back on here. All right, we're back. Sorry about the friend, guys. There's nothing I can do about that right now. Uh, in fact, maybe some of you can offer me some suggestions as to what I can do to improve my, uh, you know, my Wi-Fi signal, so that uh, this works out a little better. All right. Now I have the benefit of having an impact gun here, which is operated pneumatically by air. So I'm going to use that to tighten my lug nuts up. Okay. There we go. And you'll hear it here in just a second. And we're going to start by just snugging two of them up. And we'll put them around in a star pack when we tighten these. Sorry guys, we keep reconnecting all this good shit. Alright. I want to get some air in this tire. I know this tire's gonna be low. I think I've got a rim leak here. I didn't see any nails or anything like that in the tire when I had it off and was expecting it. Get a little air in here and then I'll get my gauge and we'll check it with the gauge. Alright, again, I gotta go off camera just to go get the gauge, folks. Give me a second. All right, we're back. Okay, I've got my tire gauge here. It's a digital gauge. We're going to turn it on first. All righty. Hopefully my battery's not dead. 
<laughs> Might be. Okay. The battery's dead on this one. Let me go get my regular gauge. Okay, all right, let's check the inflation on this tire. And we need to add some more air. So let's get some more air in here. Let's try checking this again now. And let's get some more air in there. And this tire was a little low. We're just getting some air in the tire here, folks. Okay, we'll try that. And you know what? I don't like this gauge either. I still have another gauge. Let me go get that. Let's spec this out. All right, there we go. Okay, so that uh, pretty much sums up the brake inspection here, guys. Let me just back up into the chat here and see what we've got. Okay, King of Chuck asks, so the shimmy in the front end when braking is probably the brake rotors being worn. Uh, yeah, it's usually due to warped brake rotors. You'll feel it as a pulsation in the brake pedal when you apply the brake. You might even feel the steering wheel start to shake a little bit if the uh, warpage is severe in those brake rotors, so keep that in mind. All right. Darlin' Dar, good to see you. Yeah, it's both. Darlin' Dar, it's okay. Yeah, I'm good, Darlin' Dar. Thank you for asking. What the what? King roped waters, most likely, yes. Who's my carrier? Darlin' Dar, it's T-Mobile, and they bite, okay? However, my Wi-Fi is handled by Optimum and uh, here at the house, and I noticed that my uh, Wi-Fi connections are not that great, especially out here in the driveway, since I switched from Fios over to Optimum. Yeah, I'm using the household Wi-Fi on the phone, guys. Yeah, these rotors can be turns, okay? You'll see me do that next week when I perform a brake job. 
Yeah, I certainly could use a tripod, King of Chuck. I just don't have it in the budget right now. What a blast of the years, Doug. I don't know what you're referring to. Maybe you're referring to when I was using the impact gun. Yeah, it gets rather loud. Also, the air compressor running is loud. I just turned that off because we don't need it anymore. Yes, Wakisha Pilot, they can be turned... Okay, true again, depending on the size of them, the width, yes, absolutely. That's why we need to measure the width with a micrometer and check it against manufacturer's specs. Uh, they give machine two specs and minimum specs. Uh, we don't want to go any less than the machine two specs. Yes, my compressor is in the garage, it's nearby. Yeah, I do the best I can with what I have, guys. You know, that's the way we operate. Yeah, finally silence. Yes, darling Dar. Yeah, it gets noisy. You know, at any garage is. Okay, Donna, I don't know why you retracted your message, darling. You're welcome to say anything you'd like here. Yes, yeah, something to be said for regular gauges. You got that right. All right. I haven't used these in a while, evidently, and I haven't checked the batteries on them, so it looks like I'm going to have to uh, replace some batteries. All right, guys, can we behave here and get along? Really, you know, uh, I've had enough drama. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for that wondering troll. You know, we, we will need to get along. All right, Patreon Pirate says, Doug, I have a 2011 Camaro that the brakes do a little chirp when stopping. The pads were checked and nothing is wrong. Could it just be caliper? caliper issue it could be uh i would suggest that you know you check and see if the brake pads were treated with uh, anti-squeal on the back of them uh you know a lot of times too when these brake pads get moist and absorb some moisture they tend to chirp or squeak a little bit uh darling dar you know you're going to keep this up you're going to be gone okay last warning next time you do this you're gone yeah, if you love me, then show me the love, okay, please? And show my other listeners the love, too. Okay, King of Chuck, yes, I feel the shaking in the steering wheel, too. Dang, I better fix it. Been putting things off because of money. Yeah, I know how that goes. Uh, yeah, the rotors probably need to be cut. If the rotors are too thin to be cut, then the rotors would need to be replaced. No, I haven't tried Virgin Mobile. Doug, what is my PayPal address? It's listed listed in my description down below on my uh, on my YouTube site, so you can get it that way. Yeah, Brett Stevens says I switched to semi-metallic pads. That salt brine is brutal. Yeah, it sure is. In fact, what I'm doing when I uh, the brake pads that I ordered for this are a definite upgrade to what was original equipment. I ordered carbon fiber ceramic brake pads for this okay it's supposed to improve my braking by about 20 percent so uh you know on a car that's this heavy i could really use that extra stopping power you know it's a big car and uh you know it, it pays to upgrade the brakes on these things you know king of chuck that would be great if you would i'll uh, send you my address in uh in an email or something uh i'm not going to list it here Okay, darling Dar, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad to hear you're heading back out on the water soon. I wish you lots of luck with that. Yeah, we've all had enough drama, okay? That's why I'm staying away from uh, that particular site. You know which one I'm talking about. Darling Dar, you're out of here. You know, you're very rude. Yeah, I'm sorry. Darlin' Dar's got... Yeah, I'd delete you if I could. Yeah. You're a real nice person, Darlin' Dar. Let me tell you. A real grown-up. Alright, yeah, listen, folks. You know, I've had enough. I'm not going to sit here and be abused. Alright, I'm just going to sign off at this point in time. So, once again, Darlin' Dar, you win, I lose. All right. Lots of luck to you.
you know, I tried to wish you well. I try to treat everybody well here, and uh, that seems to be the name of the game, but uh, not for you. Okay, so you're the loser, honey. All right, goodbye.